this video is inspired by Brown Dog Duke for his video about TA-312s and a German uh, field phone and how to hook them up together and the possibilities of what you could use with them. Really good. I have the link down there to it. And the uh, Doomsday Prepper episode where they showed uh, a observation post so Southern Prepper 1 had out there. In the ground there I did notice that he had a uh, TA-312 US field phone and a TA-1 field phone. Maybe he should uh, make a video about that, uh, about his setup. I uh, sure like to see that. What's up guys? This is Gorilla Geek. And what you see in front of you is three generations of radio remote control uh, from the commercial sector and government agencies like cops, firefighters, and, and so on. The first one here is this old style analog radio remote. This company is uh, obsolete. And this was out in the uh, 80s around there. Pick up the phone, got to push the talk here transmit then you have a line about a thousand feet away to this controller here and this controller is interfaced to the radio and it detects the tones off of this uh, remote here to tell the radio to transmit and receive it'll get back on the line and take it over to the remote here so this here could be in another shack or another building or even on top of a mountain and this is the modern stuff here uh, internet router but this is an IP223 and is uh, internet protocol capable so you could actually go over the internet or your own WAN network internet network and use your laptop to transmit on the radio so that could be half a world away over the internet or whatever that right there cost around 12 1300 bucks and then the program or another IP phone or tone remote cost uh, six, seven, eight hundred dollars. So it's not cheap. So why am I bringing this up? Well, Army surplus. I found a piece of equipment that I used to use when I was in the Marines that does the same thing. Not as advanced as these guys here or these, but close enough for government work or prepper work introducing the Army Navy ground radio assembly 39 Bravo ANGRA-39 Bravo this piece of equipment is a radio remote control set used by the uh, US Arm armed forces of any br service of branch actually and uh, what you see here is the uh, remote unit this goes inside the command post your tent the building uh, somewhere far away from where the radio is going to be at and this is the local unit and this is hooked up to the to the armed forces radio and if you guys been in the service you'll recognize this plug this just goes into the uh, microphone input uh, of the uh, radio in question and you have remote control up to two miles away in military radios, this could be interfaced with any of their sets from HF sets to all the way up to VHF ham portables, whatever they have, even the, the new Singar systems that they have out now. Uh, they have something replacing this already to work with the Singars, which they are able to remote control, change channels, turn it up, turn it down, and stuff like that. But this only controls one channel. So here in the CP post, you have. Uh, the guy in charge telling the guy up on a hill to change channel to whatever and change the batteries he'll maintain the batteries the antenna set and everything uh, from now on in all my videos I'm gonna use terminology used in the uh, incident command structure it's a way of uh, emergency personnel uh, govern their disasters and big incidents type 3 incidents and above and they have their own terminology, their own way of doing business, and it's a standard United States wide. Uh, here we have the uh, ICP, Incident Command Post. So this particular local unit, which is the remote control, which your hand mic to control the radio, will be located here. 
so you could put a local unit into your vehicle with with a radio in it and remote control that way so you don't have to have a body inside the vehicle here to, to talk all the time you could just do it in the safety or comfort of your uh, incident command post or you could have it at the base of a tower where you have your antenna at and just have it remote control that way or you can have it two miles away on top of a prominent structure building hilltop or whatever to get uh, height on your uh, antenna system so you can have the best efficiency as far as casting out your signal and the armed forces this is used to do the same thing but with an added value of putting all your comm gear in one place usually not on top of a, of a mountain because they could just home in on that mountain and blow the shit out of it they'll, they'll put it on the side so you'll have shielding off this way and if your friendly forces are that way then you know this is the direction that you want to take not this way or whatever but the line will be two miles away so if the enemy finds out that that you're transmitting from here from direct of find, direction finding your signal they'll just bomb the shit out of this area and the one unlucky guy that has to go up there and change the batteries and change the channels and uh, you guys will be somewhat safe two miles away unless they you know do a two mile ring of fire but you know that's that's during wartime so this is important so you could uh, keep the uh, the command center here free and clear of uh, interfering comm gear so if, if you place your radio in here it, it's it, it may be too much power to where it could interfere with your phone systems or whatever you know and, and stuff like that so by keeping the gear outside where it needs to be especially your antenna you have more efficiency as where you uh, as far as where you place the antenna it's much better to have it in a high top place to to have the best of uh, of uh, casting of your signal also another advantage is uh, let's say you're here you don't want to run a antenna wire all the way from your command post to your vehicle or your tower because uh, when you transmit 5 watts here let's say by the time it gets to this point over here to transmit out your 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 antenna it may have it might have dropped maybe two watts or something like that that's a little extreme but you always have losses on your transmission cables always this is uh, RG213 and it's pretty good stuff and it's recommended and, and is what somewhat affordable for uh, civilian guys out there in hams uh, but but it's still pretty expensive a hundred feet of this is going to set you back quite a bit now in the commercial side of the house this is what they use to to make up the losses the, the bigger the cable the better the efficiency of, of transmitting on that cable but this here it, it, it's at least five times more expensive than this and I don't know of any ham or a civilian guy unless you got deep pockets that that could afford this stuff okay let's set this puppy up both units use six batteries, six D-cell batteries located in the back hatch here. Lift it up and you got your batteries here. So it works off of 9.5 volts. Uh, the actual requirements is from 6 volts to 9.5 volts. What I plan to do for, for a modification is to put a, uh, a voltage, voltage regulator to work off a of 12 volt. So I could hook this up to a battery 12 volts or a power supply 12 volts and then it'll step it down to 9.5 volts and this thing will run off of that. Uh, 12 volts because everything runs off of 12 volts in an emergency scenario whether it be batteries that you lifted off a vehicle that's abandoned or you know your home's solar sites. Solar panels are uh, 12 to 13 volts, actually 18 but that, that's another story. There's many videos on that. Here's a hand mic, an H250 military hand mic and this came with the set. I bought a bunch of these uh, connectors that the military uses and I have it interface with this uh, connector that hooks up to this radio here. So here's the accessory connector. And that's done. And this one here mates with this connector here. You're on your own.